Good evening, brilliant nerd fam, and welcome back to Google Cloud Next. We're here in the beautiful desert in Las Vegas, Nevada. Day one of three, wrapping up our last segment, a very exciting segment with some customer veterans. But before we get there, I'm Savannah Peterson, joined by Rob Streche. You have sat in almost every single interview today, if not all of them. How are you feeling? Not, not all of them. You guys had your, uh, your segments in there. I and did have it, some power It was, it was awesome. I, I think it's been fantastic. I think the, the thing that keeps me going is really Google Cloud energy to 30,000 people here, and really all of the innovation that's going on, especially with the partners. And I think that's what's been tons of fun. For being a branded event, it is really partner I, I, focused. It is. And I think that's a, that's a beautiful thing. It's a culture of collaboration. Not surprising that we've got TCS here with us. You're our neighbors. You are yeah. CUBE veterans. <laughs> Thank you so much for being here. Krishna and Nidhi, this is, this is fabulous to have you. I can't think of a better duo to close out our day. How is the show going for you? Fun, busy? Yes. Uh, All of those things? Theme. All yeah. of those combinations, a lot of excitement, fun. This is my first Google Next. Me too. Yeah, oh, okay. Uh, so. Yeah. But you're a veteran, so. Yeah, we are so, veterans. Yes, we're veterans. <laughs> and we, okay, now, and we actually get, we actually get to be on stage together <laughs> this time, which is much better. It's always, be but tell us about the, the partnership and where you're at. I mean, it's been eight months. You know, we haven't heard yeah. in, in eight months. How are things going with you and Google and the partnership with TCS? Uh, things are going uh, really well. Um, we are um, a premier partner uh, with Google Cloud and uh, we have built uh, deep capabilities uh, with uh, talent, uh, strong, uh, impeccable uh, delivery track record, and uh, most importantly, uh, with uh, generative AI, we've done a really uh, good pivot in terms of uh, building up capabilities on uh, Vertex AI, Gemini, we have been a launch partner. So I think uh, the relationship is going really well. Uh, there is um, a lot of energy on both sides and uh, the relationship is strong at all levels of the organization, uh, which helps, you know, when your CEOs are well aligned, it, it really helps. I mean, it's pretty critical, I would say, <laughs> actually, especially for scaling innovation at the yes. AI pace that we're currently at. Yes, so, so um, uh, you can see the excitement right next door. Uh, if you just turn around and see the number of people from TCS. Oh, hello uh, everyone, <laughs> wow! Oh my gosh, this is our so, biggest so, so live you can audience see of things are going well. Y'all yeah. look fabulous. Yeah. <laughs> Love to see it, love yes. to see it. I, I mean, I think that that to me is, is really, is kind of been the story this week, but also it's been the story of the journey of AI adoption and where, where people are on and what customers are doing. What can you tell us about that from your perspective? I mean, again, your first one, but you've been working with customers, so you get this you know, every day with the excitement. Yeah, yeah. No, I think the excitement in the market by the customers on AI and specifically generative AI has been, uh, really last 12 months has been like crazy in, a, in, a, in the right way of craziness. Uh, in the initial six, eight months, it was all about euphoria, about what's art of possible. Yeah. Uh, and you know, every customer has thousands of use cases across the business functions and ID functions that they've actually developed. Now we see uh, at the you know turning point where they're focusing on exper experimentation is fine. So how do I take them now to production? How do I scale it at an enterprise level? How do I measure the value? Uh, so I think that is the phase, and to me that's the real adoption phase, at the, especially for the customers that we serve, who is Fortune 2000. Do you feel like we're at a, a hinge point? Because we've talked about this a lot, a lot of different proof of concepts, everyone's excited, all these little baby MVPs, but are, do you feel like customers are, at the stage in their journey where they're starting to hinge towards really making it real at scale, or is that something that you're really helping customers navigate a lot? Nidhi, I'll go to you for this one to start. So I will say that uh, there is a lot of uh, pragmatism that has come uh, uh, in, into the enterprise context. Um, everybody is keen to figure out the right use case to take to production. Because uh, AI is not inexpensive. 
And uh, while uh, the tons of use cases which are out there in terms of um, chatbots, um, how to build a new recipe, they're great. They, they prove the point from a technology perspective. Yeah. But for an enterprise, it has to make business sense, it has to make commercial sense. Gotta hit that PL or it's yes. just fun and yes. games. So, yeah. so to answer your question, I will say uh, our uh, clients are looking for TCS to uh, help them to that path to see the, the light towards to, that to the value, to actualization, the value. exactly. Yeah. 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 So. yeah, what are what are some of the top use cases that you are hearing from your customers? So there are three that are uh, particularly relevant, I would say. Uh, the first one is on developer productivity. So tech is like drink your own lemonade or eat your own dog food, whichever way we like to go. But the point <laughs> is that... I'll take the lemonade if we're yeah, choosing. Yeah. Just in this particular if I, if I have circumstance. A choice, yes, yeah. yes. I'll actually take a cocktail if we're at it. But. Yeah, yeah. So, so maybe drink your own champagne. Yeah. So let's say that. Yes. So, so the point over here is that being able to use AI to reimagine the software development life cycle. That's the use case that has really come to the top uh, in terms of interest from our clients, uh, in terms of interest within TCS, because it leads to a lot of productivity and overall developer satisfaction. And the other two are on uh, uh, sales and marketing, personalized campaigns, uh, you saw the creative agents this morning in the keynote, and also customer service, uh, so agents, customer agents all over. So those are the top use cases. Oh, makes total sense. Yeah, it really does. It really does. I'm curious, so obviously you touch a lot of different verticals and a lot of different geographies. I mean, you, you kind of have your hands in probably everything a little bit that everyone's doing right now, which is awesome. Are there any, are there any trends you're seeing or any verticals that are really accelerating faster perhaps than others with no, you know, no diss on any of them? Krishna, I'll start with you with that one. Yeah. No, I think the adoption, as you said, broadly across the industries. Uh, yeah, and, and seems like everyone's talking about it. Everyone's talking about it. Yeah. So if I actually look at it, probably the adoption itself in the customers, before I come to the, what are the industries who are taking lead. The adoption of generative AI, the way the TCS looks at is three phases or three uh, you know, approaches. What we call it as assist, augment, and transform. Assist is where uh, generative AI is actually assisting making human look more intelligent. Mm -hmm. And uh, I mean, we could all use that. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'll speak for myself at least. I'll take anything that looks me more, makes me look more intelligent. <laughs> Augment is where, uh, if you will, both human and uh, generative AI kind of work together, but a subset of the work is actually done by generative AI. And then the transform, I think, is where the value that we see maximum is where you are reimagining the value exchange mm -hmm. and the value cycle of the overall value chain uh, of an each industry or sub-segment, not only at industry yeah. level. Uh, so for example, if you take BFSI, banking, financial services, and insurance, yeah. at a capital market level, what is that you can, generative AI can actually improve. At an insurance, how you can improve the claims processing and reimagine the claims processing. So we all know that can be that. better too, yeah, if you've right. ever dealt with an insurance company. <laughs> so, uh, we, we, we see maximum traction uh, in financial services, life sciences, healthcare, uh, retail and CPG, and then uh, probably life sciences and healthcare. These are the maximum that we actually see the traction. It also, uh, you know, kind of uh, in the morning keynote uh, and the afternoon keynote, I think, uh, TK uh, very very yeah. you know validly identified the generative AI adoption is not only happening at technology level it's actually the business owners the LOBs who are actually seeing the value more and they are encouraging so it's the perfect combination of the businesses and the technology teams working together and that, that's where we see the maximum traction that synergy I'm so glad you brought that up that synergy has been a little bit of a theme it's kind of like the classic marketing, engineering, and product teams. There's always a little bit of healthy tension. Same things with business and tech units for obvious reasons, a cost center and, and achievement centers. But I, I do, so you are seeing across the board the trend of these units working together. Please. I mean, we were even talking to McKinsey about it with their digital and AI used to be separate, or, or cloud and AI used to be separate, and now it's basically one unit now. This kind of cross-business collaboration is, is 
hypothetically going to accelerate the innovation cycle, right? Maybe? Yes. We're making it up? Yeah. Y yes. No, you're not making it up. It is, it is very perfect. Yeah. In fact, as TCS, we both are part of AI.cloud unit. <laughs> both the AI as well as cloud uh, together. So that's where we see perfect. maximum benefit in, you know, benefits. And we're working so very sense. closely with uh, you know, our industry expertise and, and really driving. Uh, you know, you know, probably later in that we can probably take a couple of examples also where we actually see from business perspective what the use cases we are seeing. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I think again, it's a, you, you talked about a vertical approach and different industries have different reasons for going down this path. You're really focused in that as well and really helping different industries Right. With their with their transformation, I mean, you mentioned you know ins a little your insurance use case. What else are you seeing in that, and how are you instantiating it? So, uh, one of our uh, fundamental beliefs is that uh, AI adoption will be industry led on the cloud, and uh, it will be enabled by an ecosystem of partners, and that's something that was spoken about in the keynote as well when. Uh, TK spoke about you know, the Google Cloud ecosystem of partners. And most importantly, um, the model will be fine-tuned with data for the enterprise context. So keeping those, uh, so I'll go to the first cardinal principle that adoption will be industry-led. So the way we are approaching this is that we are looking at an industry and we are looking at the core value chain, the business process. And then within that value chain, we are identifying key personas. And then building a smart agents, um, AKA co-pilots, or you know, basically intelligent agents for the key persona. The, so we are taking a, taking a human-centric approach so that AI becomes more easily consumable and you are also able to break it into bite sizes or chunks, because for manufacturing, if you look at the value chain, so you will have product design, you'll have supply chain, you'll so have many things sales and marketing, distribution, yeah. and most importantly, you'll have plant operations. So, <coughs> if you do a intelligent agent for the plant operator, so you look at the day in the life of a plant operator and you see how Gen AI and AI interventions change the life. And, and then, so, so that's the human-centric approach you know, we are moving forward with. And the other thing we've noticed is that AI is getting in, consumed you know, by personas, by use cases. It's not that one mega transformation roadmap that anybody is biting. Because the not you it, know, yeah. business cases to be you know, determined. So it's you know, by personas, by use cases that we are seeing uh, the adoption of AI. Well, and what you're getting at is a really important point. It's the nuance. It's the ability yeah. to have that real-time inference, a super fast experience that's customized to you, to yeah. customize to yeah. the customer or to the end user or to an agent or to anything that's happening, and making sure that that feels as wonderful as a normal human interaction or some of the other less data heavy interactions yeah. that, we're, that we're having. Let's talk about data for a second. Uh, data is obviously a big challenge with making sure that customers yeah. get the AI solution that they want. What are some of the best practices that you're advising for your customers to navigate that? Because it's kind of a data hygiene moment. It's the less sexy part of this whole game, but yeah. <laughs> Krishna, I'll start with you if you want. Yeah. No, I think uh, data is where the real differentiation is. Right. Uh, yeah. And it's, especially at an enterprise scale, it's not easy uh, to bring in the data, curate the data, and make the data ready for driving any outcomes. But I think with generative AI, the best part of it is you can actually take the structured data as well as unstructured data, yeah. and can still make intelligence out of it. Uh, so I think that's the difference if you look at it, the cloud world versus AI world versus generative AI world. So the ability to look at unstructured, unstructured data, combine them to drive an outcome yeah. is where uh, the difference is. They would like to add a few. Uh, uh, 
And and to add to uh, the points Krishna just made, what we find is that uh, um, many of our clients, they need help because the data is estate per se is very fragmented. So you have to look at different data sources, work on deduplication of data, debiasing, uh, data labeling, all of this has to be done to create a data pipeline which will right. ground your model well. So, you know, that whole uh, data readiness for AI is a very critical nuance to enterprise grade AI adoption. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, yeah, I mean, I think this is a big key to it is that you got to be ready for it. You have to do all of this work up front and getting started sometimes it can seem overwhelming. What do you think from a you know, TCS partnership perspective you know, really brings those customers to TCS to partner with you on that journey? Where, where, where do you think, like, why is it that they start there with you? I think two, three things. Uh, one, as Nidhi said, we are number one in the talent, uh, right, in, in specifically yeah. Google sitting at the Google <laughs> yeah. Next. Uh, we are number one with uh, 35, 40,000 certifications on Google by a distance as a partner. So we have the core technical competency at scale across the you know, geographies and industries. So that's one aspect of it. The speed with which we make our, uh, you know, at a TCS level, 350,000 people are trained on AI and generative AI. So out of the wow. 600,000 strength yeah. that we have. So that, that's one. I think the second thing is, as an engineering, core engineering company, we build platforms that actually makes the adoption of generative AI and AI, uh, because we strongly believe if you want to solve a business problem and provide a business solution, it cannot be generative AI alone. It right. has to be AI, generative AI, and data and cloud all together. So we have built platforms which actually makes this adoption enterprise scaling that I said, where as you look at the journey from use case to value case, value being the business value outcome delivery, these platforms we have, what yeah. we have built is actually core differentiation, that's why they actually come to us. And the third, I think the important one is our industrial knowledge and the industry knowledge that we have on the you know, yeah. uh, verticals, uh, deep domain knowledge and the contextual knowledge that we have. Uh, so we believe generative AI, the real value is in the transform use cases where you reimagine the you know, business process, the value chain and value exchange. That TCS uh, is very deep. We have been aligned verticals as an organization and captured all that that knowledge into knowledge graphs and knowledge, uh, you know, repository, if you will, and that gets applied to drive the thing. So these are the three things: the talent, the platforms that we have built for enterprise scaling, and our industry industry experience and expertise. Well, you, that's what you're known for. You curate the best bits so that your customers can come in and adopt these new huge solutions, no matter their vertical at scale. Very exciting. So you and I chatted at AWS reInvent two years ago, I think it was now. You guys chatted eight months ago. Yeah. Since you're obviously CUBE alumni and superstars at this point, what do you hope that you can say the next time we sit down, we'll sit down, we'll call it Google Cloud Next just in case, who knows what happens at the end of this year, that you can't currently say right now. Nidhi, I'll start with you. So, uh, if, if you can say that one more time for me, so what is yes. this? What yeah. do you hope you can say a year from now? What that did I has see? A, okay. Yeah, see, say, some achievement, anything. Okay. Where do you hope we are a year from now? So, in a year from now, I think uh, we should have a few agents, you know, at the Google Cloud Next. So, I think, um, you know, uh, we could uh, do this show <laughs> with agents as well, <laughs> avatars, who knows? Uh, that's, I'm, I'm, I'm really being a little futuristic yeah. over there. You're but, allowed uh, to do that. <laughs> <laughs> I grant you permission. Yeah. But, but, but I will say that uh, uh, I, I would expect to see a lot more uh, AI being consumed in our personal lives. 
uh, as much as it yeah. will be in our uh, work lives. Uh, so I, uh, that, that's what I uh, see coming. And uh, I also will refer to a cloud study that we did at TCS. It's the AI uh, study. And it said that in three years, we are anticipating everybody to use um, uh, AI you know, for 50% of the work that they will do. So wow. I, I think that's the trend we are headed towards. Yeah, I love that. All right, let's and go for it. I actually see uh, right now it's the promise of generative AI. For next one year, probably it's realized the promise of generative AI. Yeah. Yes. So that's, that's the way I actually see it. Uh, it's evolving. Uh, every two weeks, there's a new yes. company that is coming yeah. up. Every two every weeks. Two weeks? Every, every two weeks? It's every two hours, yeah. I feel like, at this rate of innovation. Every not even hours, kidding you. New capability coming in. Yeah. yeah. After probably one year, things will settle. So you would have a mature players. Yeah. Uh, you know, ecosystems will be some kind of settled. Yeah. And we'll all focus on delivering value to the customer uh, and at more and more at scale. So that's what I actually hope to see. Yeah. And we'll still be probably in person, <laughs> not the <laughs> A robot is not taking yeah, our job yet. Yeah, I feel, yet. I feel Hopefully. Good. I feel good. <laughs> Maybe I'm just arrogant, but I feel like we'll be all right. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, this was you, absolutely. You might be. Maybe yeah. not me. <laughs> <laughs> hardly, hardly, right. hardly. Uh, I'll defend all of our jobs at this point. Uh, Krishna, Nidhi, this was so nice. Thank you both for being here so much. This is fantastic. Thanks for being our neighbors. Another shout out to everyone over there. Give us a holler. <laughs> <laughs> Fabulous. <laughs> Yes, Sam, it's absolutely fantastic. <laughs> really love having that. And I can like, feel the glow yeah, of their yeah. smiles behind me right now. It's awesome. Rob, always a pleasure to share the always. desk with you. And thank all of you for tuning in from around the world to our live coverage here from Google Cloud Next for the first three days, well, for the entire three days of the show in Las Vegas, Nevada. I'm Savannah Peterson. You're watching theCUBE, the leading source for enterprise tech news.